Welcome back guys, Mike Burrows from Stanceworks here and this is the Turbo K24 Ferrari 308 project and today we're diving into the interior. I pulled it off of the lift over the weekend. My buddy Jeremy and I built a small wooden dolly so we can roll this thing around and actually get the doors opened up, get some access to the inside of it. And we've got a lot of parts and pieces to pull out of it. I've got seats that we don't want to use anymore and I'll show you what we're going to replace those with today. We've also got an evaporator and blower motor that are hiding underneath the dash that I know we want to get rid of. And there's also factory wiring and fuse boxes that I think I want to abandon in favor of a modern PDM to go with the standalone computer system. We're going to dive around and, and see what else we find on the inside that we might want to pull. I've got carpet that I want to take out, even though I plan on putting some back in because I want to keep this a streetable car. We've just got some exploration to do, so let's dive in, start pulling pieces out, and see what we're working with. Now before I rip the interior out of this thing, I at least want to show what it looks like because it's in very nice condition. But it's not quite what I'm after. I'm envisioning something more like an F40 or a 911 GT3 RS. Very simple, minimalistic, spartan, utilitarian. I don't want any frills and I want it to feel sporty inside. Now that you've seen the car, let's start taking it apart. I think I'm going to start with the seats because these are going to be the easiest thing to remove. There's only one bolt on each corner that holds them down. And once these are out, I'm going to have room to actually get in here and start pulling other stuff out. We'll get the carpet out and then turn our attention towards either the dash or the center console. Let's get these things out of here. Removing the seats is thankfully very easy. Since they're manual and on hand sliders, I was able to move them back and forth without an issue, getting to all four bolts. Thankfully, those weren't tight, and I didn't need any special tools to get to them either. I will apologize now that the lights in the video are flickering slightly, and I can't see it at normal speed. This is something that only shows up in fast forward for time lapse, but it's causing some banding, and I'll work to fix it in the future. With the seats out, I went on and pulled the carpet, which is easy as can be. It's not bolted down, and the panels lift right up and out. You really can't ask for things to go much more smoother than that. These things only took a couple of minutes to take out of the car. And I'm happy to say after getting to see them 360 degrees, they are in great shape. The passenger seat is just perfect. It's gorgeous. And the driver's seat is in great shape too. It's got a few cracks just kind of from wear and being sat in occasionally for 40 years. But I think it's one of those situations where someone that knows leather restoration, how to work new life into old leather without having to actually redo it, could probably make this seat just as nice as the passenger seat too. So we'll have to find out. These are going to be perfect for somebody who wants to restore, preserve a 308, and keep it original and is looking for some nice seats. But that's not me, so let me show you guys what I am going to put in the Ferrari. I'm normally a Recaro guy, and if I were building one of my old BMWs, that would probably be one of my go-to seats. But for this build, I wanted to do something different, not only for myself, but for the direction that I'm trying to take this. So I bought some old seats from Japan. Now these are going to need some reupholstery, some paint on the backs, because they're old. But I also happen to believe that the seats in this box are some of the best looking seats ever made. I've got a pair of old Brid Zeta 2s, and I love the shape of these things. I've wanted some for years and years, and when they pop up for sale, they go very quickly. They're a pretty desirable old seat. Being from Japan, they're going to fit the direction of the build really well, and overall, I'm pumped on these things. It's been a long time coming for me. I'm excited. Obviously, these are really lightweight, so let's weigh these and weigh the factory seats, which are also admittedly pretty light and see what kind of weight difference we're gonna get before we pull the rest of the interior out. I had to do a balancing act off camera in order to weigh both of these seats, but between the two, there's about a 15 pound difference. But we do have to remember the fact that the Brids do not have seat mounts or sliders on them, so I'm gonna say they're actually pretty close in weight. I don't expect to lose much more than maybe 10 or 15 pounds cumulatively. However, every pound does count. I also could not help but throw the Brid into the car to take a look at it, even though this isn't how the car will look when it's finished because, well, I'm excited. All right, let's get back to pulling this car apart. The next step on the interior was to remove the seat belts because the bolts that hold them down pierce through the carpet, meaning I can't remove the carpet with the seat belts in the way. 
With the carpet pulled back, you'll see a lot of residue stuck to the factory sheet metal, and that's gonna be an interesting project to clean up, but it's definitely on the list of important things to do. With some of the carpet out of the way, I turned my attention to the center console, which had a number of screws holding it down, and then I need to get the switches out of the way. There are a lot of wires underneath this thing, and each one plugs into every single plug individually. They're all single spade connectors. I found out after getting the whole console out that there are some big bulkheaded plugs further up, but I wasn't able to get to them, so it was the slow and steady route. Now I'm shoving the camera down in here so you can see what I'm working on in case somebody finds this interesting. All of the plugs under here are pretty normal. They're just lots of spade connectors, but I've also got to disconnect the cable system uh, that operates the heater and AC vents. It pushes and pulls on these cables and actuates some valves. And it's a pretty simple system. You'll find this on a ton of cars over the years. And what I've got to work on now is getting all these little uh, holders and clamps undone. And so I found that this tiny little uh, snap-on wrench that I have is super useful for that. I can kind of get it in here and not have to worry about it. But now I've got to get a wrench to get two that this actually won't even fit in there for. We're almost there though. It's the home stretch of the center console. With the switches and the AC system all unhooked, I was able to lift it up and out. Last was just running through tape and then some general cleanup. I removed the seatbelt on the other side for the same reasons and then pulled the rear carpet, which revealed a lot of sound deadening. I slowly worked my way through some of the other trim pieces on the inside and got them pulled out of the way. And that pretty much made for a good time to stop for lunch. After a lunch break, I had to figure out how to remove the rear trim panels, which was a bit tricky because they have studs going through the rear bulkhead. With those out of the way, it was time to start tackling the rear sound deadening. It's a jute material that's glued straight to the sheet metal, which is admittedly quite messy. Oh, by the way, this is one of the best. I was sitting here thinking like, I bet this is one of those things you're not supposed to do. We then remove the sound ender from the lower panels in the car. So I've made a bunch of progress in here getting uh, lots of the sound deadener out. A lot of this stuff is just kind of adhered down. I think it should come off. Here we're looking at painted sheet metal. There is some vinyl glued down on the floor. A lot of this stuff I'm gonna have to come in, clean up, and I think I'm gonna wind up painting a lot of this black, just kind of make it simple, clean, disappear. This panel here is actually riveted in. I don't think this allows access through. This has probably got heat shielding behind it, or maybe that's what this is specifically. But we're gonna go through, we're gonna cut this out, take a look at what we're working with and decide whether I want to clean this piece up and re-rivet it back in or make a new one. So let's get the drill out. As you guys can see, there's a ton of fiberglass insulation back here, presumably just to keep heat out from the engine bay since there previously were headers right up against this rear bulkhead firewall. So we're gonna get rid of this stuff. We might put something back in it later. We're gonna have to do some R&D to figure that one out. But for now, it's coming out. Make note to wear gloves if you wind up handling stuff like this. It is fiberglass and it will make you itch if you're not careful. You don't want to get this stuff in your skin and more importantly, in your eyes. We're 
on the home stretch for the sound ender with just a couple of pieces left. With these out of the way, it really is only going to amount to cleanup of the leftover jute that's adhered to the sheet metal. I'll have to figure out what tool to use for that later this week. So while you guys have the benefit of a voiceover that's recorded in the future and lots of B-roll, I'm finally pumping the brakes to take a look at what we've accomplished today. Andrew's been here helping me out and we've got pretty much everything starting at the dashboard back removed from the car. The seats are out, most of the carpet is pulled, and we've gotten rid of a ton of sound deadening and insulation, which truth be told, really not a ton of weight and it's probably pretty nice to have in the car, but I'm not worried about it and in insulation alone, we've pulled out probably getting close to 15 pounds and I'll put something lighter weight in there. For that rear panel, I've probably already explained that I wanna put a nice you know, new updated aluminum panel in. Uh, lots of the interior trimmings I'm gonna redo in black and any exposed paint that's in there, I also plan on painting black as well. I think black is gonna be the look for the interior that I'm after. It's gonna pair well with the seats and just the overall theme of the car. I think that probably wraps up today. We've done a lot, and while I have no idea how that translates on video, this has been many hours worth of work. In the next episode, we'll get working on the dash and get it pulled out. I think that's gonna be a huge endeavor. And then we've also got the evaporator core and the blower motor hiding underneath, and a lot of wiring to get pulled out. So that'll be next time. I appreciate you guys watching along. Thank you as always for the awesome feedback on how to make this series better and better. And of course, thank you guys for subscribing. I appreciate every bit of support so far. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.